Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and I'm excited to come to you today with another new episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. And for anybody out there, this may be your first time listening and rocking with us. I just want you all to understand that the purpose of the Beyond the Ball podcast is to serve ultimately as a resource to provide stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And, and today in the studio virtually, you know, I, 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 have, I have the one and only uh, Mr. Edward Davis. He, he's an NFL sports agent and he's the CEO of the one and the only Checkmate Sports. How, how are we doing today, Mr. Davis? Hey, how you doing, man? I, I just want to say thank you for inviting me and, uh, and, and just taking time to speak with me on your podcast. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm just excited to, to, to really have, have you here and get the opportunity just, just to hear from the other side. Because, you know, we, we, always see, we, we always see NFL players on TV. We always hear about the NFL and the Shield and, and all of that. So I'm, I'm glad to have you on, on the show today. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But before we even go down, that, go down that rabbit hole, you have some experience playing in those four lines yourself, don't you? Yes, I um, actually uh, back in back back about 2008, 2010, I played quarterback um, for Virginia State University. So um, I'm a proud HBCU grad. Uh, always had the dream of wanting to go to the NFL. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. So my dream was to play for the Atlanta Falcons hmm. and to get my boys right and, and, to, and, and to make the city proud and win us a Super Bowl. But uh, back in 2008, 2010, I started to realize that was the er- uh, the the era where you had to be 6'4", 6'5", as a quarterback. Mm. I was six foot, and um, I didn't run a four three. You know, so mm. uh, it w- it was kind of tough. I was playing in Division two, uh, so I said, you know what, man, maybe I'm not going to make it to the league. Um, so instead of you know waiting to uh, my senior year to you know try to pivot i i actually started to uh think of other ways that i could stay close to the game initially i wanted to be a football coach um but i didn't like the idea of uh college politics where coaches will promise you one thing and mm. then just to get you to the school and then they may do something else um so i said you know what um i like the idea of being an agent i know it's a it's a, it's a you know a bad stigma around it from you know um people who really don't know the industry but to be honest the I feel like the agent has the the purest relationship with a with an athlete because agents only get paid if athletes get paid you know Mm. a coach makes millions of dollars and the college athletes don't make anything you know they could you know a coach could be working at one school I promise you they're gonna be there for four years you get there and then transfer to a whole nother school and now that athlete is stuck at that school you know, same with mm. the colleges. They make money with the uh, with the tickets, concessions. Athletes get nothing. But the agents, we only get money if we make the player money. So I feel like that is the purest um, and the best relationship for um, with athletes. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I'm a sports agent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then hearing you just talk about the that, and, and hearing you talk about and understanding that that there are some sharks out there. But then there are some individuals who are doing what they need to do and looking out for the client's best interest in regards to hiring an agent. And, and, and a lot of uh, college athletes, football players, and different things like that listen to the podcast. So how would you suggest someone goes about being able to, to vet out or begin, being able to, to weed out the good agents from, from the ones who might not be looking out for their best interest? Like what, like, even though I know that's a difficult thing to unpack, but like, are, are there some tips that you can give? It's like, you might want to look out for this or what about this? Some things that I like to tell athletes when they're in the process of picking their representation is, it's the first thing, first thing first, pick who picks you. Mm. You know, pick who pick you. And so, cause the reason why you said that is if you are trying to chase after a, a, a agent or agency that isn't showing, isn't making you a priority when 
um, times get hard or when, you know, when things don't go your way, they're not going to fight for you the way that you want them to because they don't appreciate you. But if you have an agent or an agency that is, you know, calling you every day and talking to your parents and trying to build that relationship with you, they're, 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 they're showing that they, that you're a priority and, you know, God forbid if that player gets cut or if that player gets injured or his, they, he or she is in a position where they need somebody to go to bat for them, that agent is going to remember how much they wanted that client and they're going to fight for that client. But if you're the, you know, 95th client on, you know, on, on a client list, then, you know, agents may not um, move how you want them to move. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, also, I would say, you know, um, think about the clients that they have that's not in the league. You know, a lot of times they say, oh, yeah, they represent this guy, or this girl, and that's great. But what are they doing for the people who their clients are just no longer in the league? Mm -hmm. What are they doing for the clients that they aren't making money for, you know? Um, and making money from as and, and I think that's a good way to to see um, how people really feel because to be honest man a lot of times um, and, and, and I don't want to get too deep but you know I got into the business because I got tired of athletes that look like us being taken advantage of everybody was making money off of us um, but I felt like they wasn't pouring it back into our community and I feel like um, like time tells all. I'm not going to say that all agents are bad. I'm just going to say there are some that, you know, uh, ex uh, take advantage of our community, but never pour back into it. So if you're a, a parent or an athlete, you know, um, see what they're doing for our community, for people that look like you, you know, they're, they're, they're taking money from the community, but are they putting it back in? So I think those are a couple of good things to, to look for um, when you're, when you're vetting your, your agents. Definitely. And I like really what you said towards the end, you said, look to see what they're doing for the community. And I, I saw a post just earlier on Instagram and the guy said, uh, you know, everybody says that they're a man of the people, but you never see them with the people. And then oh, he yeah. had the pictures of him, you know, out there handing out turkeys and different stuff like that. So I, I, I really, I really like you, you, you saying that and really hitting on that because I think that shows just, just where your heart is ultimately. Oh, most definitely. Um, that's kind of familiar with the uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement when everybody was when that was the trendy thing to do. A lot of people was po was going to protest, posting them, um, you know, with a sign, and then they would walk off. Um, so I actually had uh, posted a a um, a picture from me back in a, the hands up that was it hand hands up don't hands shoot don't rally. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was back in 2014 here in Atlanta. Um, me and me and a couple of my buddies, we you know, we took pictures when we were out there just showing like, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not just doing it because it's the trendy thing to do. We do it uh, because, you know, we are of the community and we care about it. Hmm. So I, I agree with that, with that, um, with, the, with that post you saw earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So just understanding that and just, you know, just thinking about your background and, and, and where you are now, I, I want to know what would you say are your core values that, that were instilled in you from a young age. But, like, because I feel like I kind of can see some of it now just from some of the stuff, stuff that you share, but I'm, I'm just curious, like, like what was like one of those major core values that, you know, a parent or a grandparent or a mentor instilled into you that you still operate within to this day? A um, couple things. Um, I think that the, the uh, one of the things that I, I can really say helped me um, with my life is delayed gratification. Um, growing up, my dad was a, was a big um, influential person in the city of Atlanta. Um, he was, he ended up becoming a rapper. He rapped with uh, the rap group Boys in the Hood, and uh, which was with Young Jeezy, Joe DeBreeze, and, you know, signed the Puff Daddy on him. So he was, uh, and prior to that, he was always influential in the city. So um, the thing that I noticed about him, he was a great father in the sense of showing me the game. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He, 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 of course he did things that he didn't want me to do, but I appreciated that he was man enough to show me those things. Um, so he would, he would do like things like, like, um, not to get too personal, but like he had four baby moms, you know, and my dad was like, he didn't, he didn't glorify it, but he just showed you like, Hey, this is this, you know, if you do this, this is the consequence. Mm 
Mm. Um, and, 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 and it gave me a perspective because a lot of times people see the street life and they only see, you know, prior to 30, you know, the fast life, the women, the, the cars, and it's great. Um, but, but, uh, but there's life after 30 and, you know, that street life is a young man game, you know? Um, and I realized that, Hey, I want to live past 30, you know? Mm, and yeah. so, uh, growing up, I, I tried to stay away from doing certain things that could get me, um, in trouble or that could get me, you know, that could mess up my, my future. Um, and that just taught me delayed gratification because a lot of my friends and people around me were doing, you know, living a fast life. And it was tough at times to see, you know, this, this guy getting this, or, you know, he, you know, having all this type of money. Um, but I think um, it, it paid off for me in the long, long run, because now I'm able to um, live a life that a lot of people can't live because they did things that they weren't supposed to do earlier. So now they have a record or they have, you know, um, they built a reputation where people don't trust them. Um, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I would say delayed gratification was 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 number one. And um, I think number two is uh, not even in an order, but I think uh, being a, a good person mm. um, is, is, is big. And because uh, in the same sense of how my dad was, was, you know, street life, you know, having having a ball my mom it was just why they say opposites attract is uh uh you know very strict christian you know every every month she's paying her tithes my grandfather was a was a preacher so we grew up in the church so i basically had you know both worlds I, on the weekend i'm at my dad house and we might be in a mm -hmm. in a trap house we might be you know so go some crazy stuff and during the week i'm at bible study uh i'm at church on sunday so uh for my granddad he 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 taught me to um, be a just be a good person, you know, and, and, and to do the right thing. Because if you do the right thing, you can have a peace of mind. You never have to worry about lying. You never have to worry about, you know, somebody, you know, call, call, bringing skeletons out of your closet because um, you're not doing anything that you you wouldn't stand on. And um, uh, and uh, also probably financial freedom. That's real. Mm. Those are the big things that 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 are big. Um, of course, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. That seems like the book that that starts every entrepreneur um, down that journey. <laughs> um, before I read the book, I was an entrepreneur. Before I knew it, I just I sold candy in high school uh, to buy Jordans and pay for my car and gas and stuff. And I was just doing just to make some money because I played football, so I couldn't really get a job. And then when I read that book, it just took me down the entrepreneur path. And I'm, I'm, I'm real big in being in control of our future and uh, leaving a legacy. So mm -hmm. I think those are the top three things that really molded me. Um, of course, there's some other things, but those probably the top three things to um, mold me and turn me in, into who I am today. Yeah, man, you hit on a lot, Ever. You hit, you hit, really hit on a lot. Because I think, I mean, be, being a good person, I think it's essential just across the board just now more than ever before I feel just showing love and just showing respect to somebody just typical you know common courtesies I think some some in some places I, I feel that we, we might have lost sight of that a little bit um, and, and, and even in addition to like what you said delayed gratification and and now with with social media and Instagram and Twitter and want everything in an instant want everything right away and right in the moment but man that entrepreneurial journey I, I want you to talk a little bit about how the entrepreneurial journey for you, like the parallel between that and when you were when you were playing sports and, and you were out there. Because I mean, I, I think I think there's so much there, and and just helping people understand, like the value that you have on the field doesn't just stop when you stop lacing them up, but there's still some things that can cross over. Talk a little bit more about that, Edward. Oh, so just to make sure I have the, the, you're asking me about my entrepreneurial journey from as an athlete from once I stopped playing up, up until now or how athletes can be entrepreneurs at the same time being an athlete. Oh, that's two good questions. I didn't, I, I, I threw one at you. I didn't know you were going to hit me with that. I'm talking about for, for you, for you personally, how, how, how did when the shift happened from playing sports to then becoming an entrepreneur? Okay, so the shift happened, basically, it, 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 it happened while I was playing sports, because the same time mm -hmm. I realized, hey, I'm not going to get 6'5", I'm not going to be running, I'm not running a 4'3", I have to, you know, figure out, 
you know, what is the, what is my next, my next move? Um, so my, it was my sophomore year. I remember my girlfriend at the time, she entered um, her, her uh, uncle was a millionaire and he showed me his uh, E-Trade portfolio and it was like a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand dollars in it. Um, and that was my first time seeing it, that much money in person. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when he told me to read Rich Dad Poor Dad. So while I'm reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, I'm still in school, uh, but I'm realizing that my career may be coming to a, a end. Um, so I wanted to, you know, I tried to um, do, I, I, I wanted, I knew I wanted to be a sports agent, but I know in order to be an agent, I needed some capital. So I did a, a lot of different odd jobs and ran different businesses to, you know, um, save up money to start the agency. So for example, back when FanDuel and DraftKings was real big, um, in 2015, um, I actually was a professional fantasy football, basketball, and baseball player. So I would um, play on the site, and what I did was I had an affiliate, uh, an affiliate partnership with the company. So I would teach people how to play, and I would sign them up to the company. And then they would give me a percentage of whatever they played. So um, I would I would usually probably get about about twenty five hundred a month. Um, mm -hmm. Just you know, wake up at, at, at on the first of the month. Drank FanDuel, DraftKings would send me a check, and then I would make money because I would sell my lineup. So whatever lineup that I would have for that week, um, I would sell it to people via Instagram, and um, I made some good money back in those days. And then. Um, I did other jobs where I, you know, I got into the, um, I got into the, the, uh, the Bitcoin space, um, Bitcoin, Litecoin, when that was going on in 2017, uh, educated people on that. So I've always been going down that path, uh, which ultimately led me up to Checkmate. And also wow. sold life insurance as well, because I wanted to learn how to sell. So um, everything that I learned from those books in the early days um, I tried to implement that in my life uh, to you know, acquire certain skills to, 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 to build capital and go from there. Edward, my God, man, what, what, you, what you're showing me now, what you're showing me now is the, the point that I've, I've heard it said often is you're either a producer or you're a consumer, but you're showing me that platforms that are built to, for people to consume, you found a way to ultimately be the producer because you you said you was getting on FanDuel and you were signing people up you was getting paid and then you was and then you were selling your lineups I didn't even know you could do that yeah um I didn't know you could do that uh I'll be <laughs> honest with you that wasn't my initial plan I was just love playing fantasy football and so one day I had made a lineup and I had one and I was just so excited. I think I won probably $30. Boy, it was my first time really trying. So I just put it on Instagram like, wow, you know, and I tagged FanDuel. I said, I, I won on FanDuel. And there was somebody who was on social media. I guess they looked up the hashtag and saw that I had won. It was like, hey, could you teach, you know, could you show me how to do this? And instantly that my mind works like, sure I can, you know. This is what I can do. And then once I realized like, okay, there's a market for this. I am on the ground floor because nobody really knows about this. I said, you know, I'm gonna run with it. So that's what we did. I, I started a YouTube channel. Um, I did weekly videos on my picks for fantasy football and uh, people who didn't know about it, I signed them up. People who did, I saw them lineups and that was the business model. And it was going well until um, they actually passed the law to ban it. It was oh, like, so like yeah. overnight, my business just like stopped and then they made it legal again. But now it's it's so hard to make money in it because uh, analytics took over the, the computer scripts. So guys, mm. um, you know, they they put up they have 150 lineups compared to your one lineup and the same, you know, top five, 10 percent people win all the money. So just got out of that space. Wow, man. Well, I think, you know, just, oh, go ahead. But no, I'm just saying, but yeah, that's this the entrepreneur route. That's, that's my, that's my, I, I love it. Man. Yeah. Edward, man, I'm, I'm grateful for all those experiences you had, man. Cause I, I, I was taking time and I was, you know, I was on your, your website and, and just checking out everything that you all do. And, you know, just, just looking a little, a little bit more about checkmates and ultimately checkmate ultimately and seeing 
how with you with all this experience and you with all this knowledge now uh -huh. every client that you work with you can pour into them and you can invest into them just based on what you've learned so uh now now the question i want to ask because i i looked at and i saw i saw something on you all's website about how you all are preparing your clients leading up to the draft and and how you're just preparing them to be a holistic individual so can you talk about that like can you talk about like if there were some ingredients that help prepare somebody before the draft, what, what does that look like? Cause I see you, you all are doing a great job with that. Okay, well, not the two are uh, to the own horn, but um, an example is we actually got two guys that were unranked. Um, so our first year was 2018. So we, um, we had our class this year, 2020 draft. Um, we got we had two guys that were unranked prior going from the draft, which is uh, Travis Reed from South Alabama, Christian Angulo from uh, Hampton University. And we got those guys signed um, to the Indianapolis Colts and the New York Giants. And the reason why that is, you know, uh, noteworthy is because um, these guys, they didn't have uh, an invite to the combine. They didn't have an all star game invite. Um, and their pro day was canceled due to COVID. So um, if you're familiar with sports, you would know like players that are unranked going into the draft and they don't have any way to showcase their talent in a pandemic, it's really tough to get on an NFL team. So for us to get two guys into the league, um, it showed the work that we put in, but how we do that and how we prepare um, for that is if you go to my Instagram page, um, it's a uh, call my agent underscore, what was it underscore, um, I actually documented the process where we created the first virtual pro day. So what we did was when they canceled the pro days in March, we actually had a cameraman come up to the training facility that the guys were training at. And we had him do a mock pro day. So we recorded everything like it would be a traditional pro day. We just did it on camera. And my thought process was, um, if we if we go on lockdown, these scouts and these coaches are going to be in the house watching Netflix. Mm. If I can send this film to all the coaches in the business, then they will know about my players that a lot of people don't know about. And the thing was, it worked to perfection because once we sent it out to them, most of the other agents in the business said, you know what, we'll just come back next year. Mm. A lot of players in the draft slid in the draft, but we said we, every year matters to us because we aren't a huge firm. We, you know, every, we are a growing company and we want, and we care about our clients because we know, Hey, they don't have another year. It's, it's now or never. Yeah. So um, once we did that, we sent, we blasted out to all the teams in the NFL and a number of teams called me. Um, they, they, they liked what they saw. They wanted to make sure those numbers were, were true and verified. So they called the, the college coaches, the coaches vouched for them. And that's what they, they ended up going, getting to the league. And I think that says a lot because these guys literally were unranked and they ended up signing, you know, um, $2 million contracts. Wow. Wow. Ed, you always on the cutting edge, man. You know, I, I think it's, um, when you look like us, you got to be creative. Mm. You know, that's, that's how we create the culture. Um, you know, we, a lot of us aren't coming from daddy's money or we don't have uh, somebody that can reach, reach back and pull us up. So the only way to do it is either you're going to be a victim or you're going to be a, a victor. And I'm the type of person where, you know, um, all I need to know is if, 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 if it's a chance and if it's a chance, I'm going to take it. So that's, that's how we, that's how we operate. Man, man. So it would you thinking the way that you think, man, I'm, I'm, I'm curious just if, if, if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who, who would it be? That's a real, that's a really good question. Um, dead or alive. Um, uh, who would it be? Um, I, 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 I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I mean, this is a really good question and I don't want to just rush it, but if I had to just go off the top of my head, I would probably say Master P. Mm, why, why Master P? I want to hear your reason on this because one. Because I feel like Master P is what everybody thinks other celebrities are. 
um, in the sense of Master P is, is it does everything for what I see on the outside looking in that uh, I stand on and that and, and that I like. I love the fact that he was independent. You know, I love the fact that um, he coming out of the South when people didn't respect the South. So he, you know, he, he had to pave his way. Um, I like how he was smart enough to say, hey, you know, my son is, I'm going to put my son on. He got Romeo, you know, he, he got, you know, all his, all his people, you know, in his camp, you know, um, on. And I feel like from what we hear outside, he's never done anything unethical. He didn't snake mm -hmm. anybody in the business to become more, you know. Um, he's not doing anything behind closed doors that will go against my moral code. So from what I see, on the outside looking in, I think Master P is a, is a great example and a great pioneer for everything that I, I that I strive to be. And I would love to, uh, that's probably somebody I love to interview and network and just, you know, soak up the information. Cause I mean, he, if you ever watch one of his interviews, he always has great interviews and drops gems and just give you a lot of stuff that you can, you know, it's a lot of substance. And I think that that's somebody I would love to, to learn from. In case he hears this interview and you get the call, I I, I just want to be I, I'll be in the Zoom room. I'll be quiet. I'll, I'll be on mute. But just just Most just pass me in. Yeah. Most definitely, we'll do. We'll do. <laughs> pass me in. Oh man. So, what does what, what does operating in purpose look look like for you, Edward? Um, I think that my, I think my end goal. Um, everybody has a purpose, right? As you, and I think my end goal is to. Um, break generational curses. Mm. Um, and I feel like that is, you know, at, you know, whenever you see um, movies like Batman or, you know, movies where they have, where people come into old wealth, there's always a, 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 a picture over a fireplace. And it's always that guy who started the generational wealth. You get what I'm saying? They, 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 they was the guy who founded the company that ended up later down the years turned into a, a billion dollar company or something like that. Unfortunately, nobody in my family has been able to do that prior before me. So I feel like it's my job to uh, build that foundation. And so that my grandkids, 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 you know, when they go to the house and they see that picture of me, they say, okay, granddad was the one to, to build all of this for us. Um, and um, and and not just for um, for for my family, but my my community, um, because I feel like um, I don't feel like I'm I'm a realist and an optimist at the same time, and I think that means by like I don't feel like I can change the world because people are people, but I do feel like I can change my world, and I want mm -hmm. to um, change the people that uh, that I come into with my community. Um, my coworkers, my friends, and my families, and and try to you know uh, put them in a situation where um, we may be the world is going to be the world, but we're in a situation where we're 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 comfortable and we're protected inside of this world. Man, I love it. I love it. As as you were saying that, I just kept thinking because you said rich dad poor dad earlier, so I just kept thinking because I was listening to the audio book a few weeks ago about how you know how the rich dad was you know, just teaching life, le well, he was allowing the sons to catch the life lessons versus teaching them. And I, I don't know, I just envisioned what you were saying, like the picture up there, and then just seeing like children being taught or catching the lessons or the gems that you just living out, man. So, uh, man, I, I, I really think that I really think that's dope. Edward. I really think that's, that's real dope, man, just operating in purpose and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to just continue to follow your journey. And, you know, we're going to continue to stay connected. So, yeah, man. Hey man, I appreciate you, man. I I, I support everything that you do, man. I, I know that running a podcast isn't easy. I know it's the latest, you know, trend to do, but um, like you said, just being able to stay consistent um, that shows a lot about you and your determination. And whenever I see somebody, you know, doing anything like this, I know the journey. Um, so I try to do my best to support it. And that's why, you know, once I realized you, you, you had a podcast, I said, hey, man, if you would have me, I would love to jump on. And, um, you know, here we are. So I'm definitely going to be in contact with you um, once I get these guys um, signed for this next draft class. If you want, uh, we can set something up. I got some good guys on deck. Um, you can interview them as well. And, um, you know, go from there. Just, just help each other.
Sound, sounds good, brother. Sounds good. But before I let you go, before I let you go, I got to run you through the two-minute drill. We was talking about pro day. We was talking about the draft. I got to run you through the two-minute drill. So, uh, and, and like like I told you offline, I'll just explain for everybody out there listening. It might be their first time. Uh, the two-minute drill is where I do a couple of rapid-fire questions. It's more than a couple, but it's some rapid-fire questions. And uh, just the opportunity for just the audience just to get to know a little bit more about you just in rapid-fire fashion. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. All right. Here we go. What's your favorite food? Ribs. Oh, what? Down south ribs or up like St. Louis type ribs? Mm, barbecue. I don't know. Just good ribs. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. What's the last book you read? Uh, what's the last book? Uh, what is the last book? It's um, right here. Oh, the draft, Pete Williams. Okay, okay, okay. Favorite podcast? It's tough. Uh, probably say Kevin Samuels. Mm, okay, okay. What, what's the name of this podcast? I, I, people don't know about that, Kevin Samuels. I don't even know if you would call it a podcast. He actually runs a YouTube page and is really for self-development of men. Um, I love self-development and I love people who are um, no, like no nonsense, you know, they don't cut corners in truth, you know what I'm saying? But if we had to say something like uh, that a lot of people know, I would probably say, uh, what is, earn your leisure, that's how earn your leisure. Oh, okay. Well, you, you don't have to say one that everybody know about, I'm, but I'm but I'm glad you dropped that one about Kevin saying, I'm, I'm gonna check him out, I'm gonna check that out, man. Check him out, man. Check him out, he's really good. Okay, go, go, go. What's what, what what cereal do you think is most underrated? Um, raisin brand, um, crunch. Mm, okay, Not okay. The original raisin brand, the raisin brand crunch. That's the, that's the, that's very underrated and underappreciated. Gotcha, gotcha. What and what's your go to Netflix show of preference? As of right now, uh, what is my favorite Netflix show? That's what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite Netflix show. Uh, oh, man. I would have to say... For you and for this podcast, I would say Mad Men. Mm, you ever saw okay, that? Okay. I haven't. I need, I need to check. I've heard a few people say it. I haven't checked it out. I need really to add it to show. my stuff. Very under, oh. underappreciated, but throw it in there. The Wire is the best show of all time to me. Mm. I've been Love hearing about that too. I feel oh like man, you need to take time, get HBO, check The Wire out, and uh, get on Netflix and check out Mad Men. Um, I mean, it has so many life lessons in both of those TV shows that it, you just I like. Cause see, the thing about me, I like to watch TV and get something out of it. You know, mm -hmm, you're already mm -hmm. wasting your time being entertained, so at least let me get something out of it. And out of Mad Men and um, the Wire, I mean, The Wire changed my life, honestly. Um, wow. And it's funny because I told you my dad was in the rap group, The Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. So their very first video was Them Boys. Uh. And, and the cast from The Wire was in that video. But I never watched the vi I never watched the show because um, I think I was like 15 at the time. So I wasn't watching The Wire. But now I remember watching it like a year ago and I remember calling my dad, I'm like, yo, that show was good. <laughs> I see why y'all had them in the video now. Like, yeah, it was, it was. It was wow. Yeah. Super dope, super dope. And then, and then last question, you can take your time on this one, but what's one tip that you want to leave out there for a student athlete? Um, okay. So yesterday I read an article about how, um, how Dave Chappelle told Netflix to remove the Chappelle show because when he was younger, he signed a contract with Comedy Central and, um, and now they're making residual income off of his show, but Dave Chappelle no longer gets um, anything from that. So mm -hmm. when they started streaming it on Netflix, Dave Chappelle reached out to Netflix and said, hey, until I get paid from Comedy Central, I want you to remove that plat remove this from the platform. And even though Netflix didn't have to do it, they did it. Mm -hmm. And they did it because 
they're going to make money with Chappelle, more money than they'll make off of that show. So my point is to, to, to student athletes is to use the power and the leverage while you have it. You know, a lot of times, and that's why I do, um, I do think Michael Jordan is the best player of all time. But when it comes to off the court, I feel like LeBron James is the best human, um, best athlete. And because he get, he leverages his power, not only for him, but to empower all of his friends around him. And I think that athletes, we they wait till it's too late to leverage that power. If you are the star quarterback, star wide receiver, star basketball player, you need to be building relationships for your career now. Don't wait till you're no longer starting or till your, your, your career is done because people aren't motivated to help you then. Unfortunately, mm. people like to help when you're at your peak. But a lot of times we don't lev- we don't use our leverage, you know. Um, and uh, another thing I'd like to say, when you're at your peak, don't wait to God humble you to be humble. Oh. A lot of times players will get Hollywood, you know, and, and, and do all those things. And then life happens and then they want to be humble. And then they want to treat people, you know, but people remember how you were when you was up. So mm. it may not move how you want them to move. So uh, those are two things I would say, you know, when, you at, when, you, when you're at your peak, leverage your power, but humble yourself before God humbles you. Man, that was good. Man, that was good. You, you have made it through the two minute drill. You made it through the two minute drill, but I'd like to just slide in this bonus question. Who would you like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Uh, who? I would like for you to get Taylor Rooks if you could. Oh man, you have a connection. You have a connection with her? No, I wish. Oh, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, if you wanted somebody uh connected with, I have some um, I have some people. I probably have to think about it offline that 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 could benefit that you guys could both benefit from this. Um, sure but. You know, just if I had to say, you know, Taylor Rooks would be something I would like okay. to hear. Okay, for sure, for sure. I, I, I might, I might crop this clip and then tag her, and then we, hey, we, we get it up there. Like, hey, Taylor, what, what's up? The, the people want to hear you. The people want to hear your voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she so. seems like a very uh, likable person. She seems like she's not Hollywood, so I think she'll reach out and, and and do it. So you know, you never know. Shoot your, shoot the shot. Dope, dope, dope. And before you go, uh, is, is there any final words you want to share with the people and also let them know where they can find you and connect with you? Okay, well, if you want to follow me, um, you, again, you can follow me on my Instagram and Twitter. It's call my agent underscore. Um, it's, you know, spelled regular C A L L M Y A G E N T underscore. Um, and also, I have a um, web class that I'm launching in December um, where um, if you want to be a sports agent, if you want to uh, work in sports, uh, we're actually, you know, going to start our intern process um, in January. That's when it's going to start, but it opens up in December where you can apply, sign up for the class. And um, if you make it through the internship, the cool thing about our internship is we actually hire you at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. So a lot of interns, uh, especially in the agent business where you can do an internship, but they don't let you do any any real work. They just have you do Microsoft sales. They have you do things, just grunt work that they don't want to do, but they don't really give you the knowledge and game that you need to become a agent. Um, So my business model is to do the opposite. I want to educate um, as many people that want to be agents and we bring them into our, you know, into our, 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 our classroom and we groom them and then we release them into the world. Uh, so we did our trial run um, this past season where I took a young lady and it's all documented on my Instagram page where she was a recent graduate from Xavier University. She interned with her last, interned with us last year, came aboard this year, and now she actually has a draft pick that we will be announcing Um once the season ends, wow. um, you know, so she, we, we basically took her from grad, from grad school and now she's, you know, on top of the world. And this is a, a, a black female agent, um, a aspiring agent. So um, that's, that's what we're excited about. We're just trying to build a company. So if they want to do that, just follow the Instagram page and stay on the um, lookout for that post. Call my agent underscore. Yep. 
Excellent, excellent. Well, everybody out there listening, uh, I would encourage you all just to be sure to, to, to slide in Edwards DMs. If you found that this podcast was helpful, just share something that was a big takeaway for you. Share something that he added value and, and, and connect with him because, you know, he, he's doing great things. Just as he said, he's, he's preparing to, to open everything up to where they're, they're doing the internship going. And, and even like that, he said, he's looking to educate and give people the game to make sure that people have the tools that they need to be successful in this space. Edward, man, much respect to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to stay connected. And if I could be a resource in any way, please let me know, my man. All right, man. You take care. I appreciate you again. Yes, sir. You do the same. All the ballers out there, be sure, like I said before, to share this episode with one friend that you know needs to hear it. And if you're feeling real friendly, then be sure to slide over to Apple and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate those. My name is Jonathan Jones. And until next time, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.